Now we've got the Democratic nominee for Congress in California's 27th Congressional District, Christy Smith. Thank you so much for coming on. Great to be with you. Now, you're running for Congress in California's newly formed 27th District. For those who don't know how flippable your district is, can you give a quick overview of the district that you're running in? Absolutely. So this is the northernmost part of both the city and the county of Los Angeles. So the Los Angeles area is blue, solidly blue, with the exception of this seat and a little piece of uh, where Jay Chen is running to represent. But in 2020, I ran a race against the same Republican, lost it by just 333 votes. But after redistricting, we've added a few more points of Democratic registration to the new map, um, making this one of the most flippable seats in the country. Yeah, I actually want to want to expand on exactly that point. Uh, like you said, uh, Mike Garcia won by only 333 votes in 2020. Can you speak on exactly how the district that he won changed after redistricting? And I guess, uh, you know, speak on um, how you benefited from that moving into 2022. Sure. I mean, it's two things, really. The district changed um, fundamentally. The very uh, Republican-leaning stronghold of Simi Valley is now part of Julia Brownlee's district, uh, which gave us more of the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles County, much more heavily uh, democratically registered, as well as expanding up into Kevin McCarthy territory in the northeast of the county. Um, also very heavy Democratic registration advantage there. So it kind of uh, reshaped, you know, physically and and um, in terms of registration, but also what changed since 2020 is, um, you know, when I was running the special election to try to defend this seat after Katie Hill resigned, um, we were the first race to go uh, during COVID, first special election to be held right as the entire country and world were being shut down. And that really changed the dynamic of how we operated as a campaign and how Democratic campaigns operated across the country. Uh, we believed that COVID was a huge danger to people, and we decided not to go door to door to keep our volunteers and our voters safe. And so consequently, you know, we, we realized, you know, really hammered home how important field game is to us when we took that off the table for ourselves, um, but also that every vote counts. I mean, literally mine was the third closest in the country with just a 333 vote spread. And so if people ever think that their voice and their vote doesn't matter, it really, really does. And now what should people know about Mike Garcia as we head into this election? Sure. I mean, that, that he's an, an extremist. You know, he does uh, performative centrism in the district and did during his last campaign as well. But his votes are anything but, you know, he's voted against the Violence Against Women Act. He's one of the members who not only uh, has his name on the Life Begins at Conception Act, which is their roadmap for a national uh, abortion ban, but he signed the brief to SCOTUS to overturn Roe. Um, he is extreme against uh, labor issues and protecting labor rights. And he was one of the people who voted even after the violence on January 6th, not to certify those election results. He's right there with the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Lauren Boberts of the caucus, um, recently calling, you know, the FBI the Third Reich. And um, you know, when he's in spaces where he feels safe to be extreme, he does so. But voters are catching on to that here. He can't hide it any longer. And, and just on that idea of these Republicans um, presenting themselves as, especially on this idea of Roe, presenting themselves as moderate or saying, well, look, you know, I'm, I'm representing Los Angeles. There's nothing to worry about. At the same time, these exact same people are also signing on to legislation that would ban abortions nationwide. And so the same people who are yep. telling you not to worry, just like they have been for 50 years, and then saw to it that Roe was overturned, are now telling you not to worry about a nationwide abortion ban while they are simultaneously moving to make sure that there's legislation to do exactly that. Exactly. The, the hypocrisy is rich and it goes deep. You know, he, absolutely. He is someone who, by putting his name on the Life Begins at Conception Act, is doing a wink and a nod to saying, oh, but you're in California. It's perfectly safe. But if he has his way, it'll be a national ban. Um, you know, on that and contraception as well. He's someone who opposed, you know, the guaranteed access to contraception, which is fundamental health care for people who access it. So, you know, they're, they're just not to be believed now, no matter how many of them are editing their websites and changing prior positions. You're on record and we've got you. In Los Angeles, no less. Uh, what, what do you want voters to know about you? What are you running on? Sure. Well, listen, I'm, I'm someone who believes that, you know, the United States best days are ahead of it. And as a mom, I'm running because the next generation of Americans are going to inherit an America that'll be the most diverse in her history, but with the greatest number of challenges. I mean, everything from um, income inequality to uh, climate challenge, uh, you know, the, the need to really make sure that we shore up voting rights and, and preserve this democracy for the next generation are all of the things that motivate me. 
um, but also continuing with, you know, the Biden agenda, which has, when sampled, you know, item by item is incredibly popular with the American people because it goes to the heart of people being able to have successful, productive lives, to keep a roof over their head, to put food on the table, um, you know, and really draw focus to where it should be, which is, you know, that a rising tide raises all boats and we're all in this together. Uh, and we need to continue to move that way as a country or get back to moving that way as a country. Now, I know that Roe has changed the calculus nationally, but what about in the district that you're running in? Like, what have you seen on the ground and particularly from independents and Republicans? This is a an issue with overwhelming support in this country an overwhelming support for protecting fundamental guaranteed freedoms that Americans fought for decades for. Uh, it polls at over 71% support here, support for Roe as it was adjudicated back in, in 1973. And so it is not an issue that a Republican is gonna win on here, especially not one as extreme as Mike Garcia. And the fact that here in California, we've got a ballot proposition seeking to codify those rights and protections for people in California, I think is another thing that's gonna really motivate voters and make a huge difference in this race. On that exact point, it's ironic that Republicans in a state like Michigan are working their hardest to make sure that those um, ballot measures stay off the ballot in November because they know how much of a motivating factor uh, that exact issue is. Of course, if they, if they didn't want voters to turn out, they might have uh, thought about that before they overturn 50 years of precedent. Yeah, and unfortunately, a for woman a big segment outside. now of, of the GOP democracy is only convenient when it's going their way now. Right. Now, how do you instill in people just how important your house race is in the broader scheme of democracy, abortion rights, voting rights, gun safety, and on and on? I mean, look, the GOP in D.C. has proven time and time again how willing they are to just be purely obstructionist um, and to move against things even when they're good for all of America, whether it's infrastructure, um, you know, negotiating prescription drug prices, protecting Medicare and Medicaid. And so even if we, our prospects look great for the Senate right now, um, and we know we've got President Biden in the White House for two more years, but without the House moving and advancing really important legislation to kind of continue that work to, to fight for those uh, important programs will end because we know that under Kevin McCarthy's leadership, all of that important work stops in the House. And so what what does that work look like in a Democratic run Congress? Like what can what can people expect if a district like yours is flipped and we're, we're able to hold on to that House majority? I mean, I think the priorities continue as they have been. And first and foremost, making sure that we go one more time around at, at trying to protect um, you know, voting rights with by passing H.R. 1 and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. So that right off the bat, we've got to you know, protect our democracy and, and elections for future generations. Continuing the Biden agenda on climate work and climate policy. You know, we're part of a global community and we have a commitment to do our part across the globe but there is no better evidence than what we're experiencing right now in California and across the country. California experiencing both record temperatures and a significant water shortage. Our drought here is severe, uh, while other parts of the country are seeing flooding uh, like they haven't seen in centuries. So the work on climate has to continue. And of course, you know, the work to make sure that we are honoring our commitments to people who have earned benefits, like veterans benefits, like Medicare, like Social Security. These are not programs, you know, as the, the Republicans are posing that we simply can, with the stroke of a pen, wipe out when hundreds of thousands, millions of Americans rely on them for their basic living standards. But they will. I mean, we they should will. know They've that. They've signaled that. that. Right. That, that's right. that's Rick Scott's plan. The guy who's in charge of retaking the Senate for the Republicans wants to sunset all federal legislation after five years. If if we are sitting here pretending that Republicans are, are ever going to reinstate or repass Medicare, Medicaid and Social Security, we're living on another planet. Um, right. are, are you satisfied with the level of attention that your race is getting or do you feel like people are focusing too much on Senate or gubernatorial races? I think people are focusing too much on 2024, you know, and wondering if yeah. there's going to be a rematch of the disgraced former president and, and Joe Biden. And right now, this midterm, again, you know, we've said it for the last several cycles, this midterm is the most significant and consequential election in our lifetime. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm really proud to be part of a very big democratic field that includes both frontline members, people who are currently in the House, like fighting really hard to hold on to seats after redistricting, as well as expanding our map uh, in California, as we're doing with some of these important opportunities for pickups. So, uh, you know, we're all doing the hard work and um, kudos to everybody else who is out there fighting this fight with me because the future of America really is determined in these swing states and st swing seats. On that exact point, what's the polling looking like in your district right now? Uh, we feel really confident, like we are very safely and comfortably uh, within the margin of error, but we don't want to take anything for granted. You know, we really need 
resources to prove our point that Mike Garcia is extreme and, and communication to voters takes a lot of money. And we know that on his side, he's, he's got some very well-funded allies who are willing to write big, big checks to him. And I'm a no corporate money, no DC lobbyist money candidate. And so uh, we are trying to uh, match his, his piggy bank and uh, we'll continue to do that. But if we can communicate the messaging to our voters, we know we will win this seat. Well, that seems like a good segue into my last question here. What can Angelinos like myself who otherwise live in this safely blue enclave do to help you? Well, I will start by saying um, we love the fact that our race has been adopted by so many incredible activists across the L.A. area who write postcards, make phone calls, come out and do the hard work of knocking on doors with us. And we welcome that. Uh, we also welcome contributions. As I said, the only way we get our messaging out is with money. And folks can find out information about how to do all of that at Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, for congress.org. Christy Smith, thank you so much for taking the time. And for anybody listening or watching, I don't know how to stress this enough, but this is the race that we should be watching these, these super close, flippable, red to blue house races. So if there's anybody looking to help, especially those of us, you know, who live in a place like Los Angeles, where, you know, there's not much to do here politically, uh, this is the race to look at. So thank you so much for taking the time and good luck in your race. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it, Brian. 